Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and I wanted to talk today about the recent announcement from the Home Secretary um, who has proposed a change or an amendment to the law um, which is going to be a restriction on the internet sale of knives. Um, now, there is a, this is a very emotive topic. It's been doing the rounds on all of the usual forums, Facebook, the media, that kind of thing. Um, and to start off with, I want to say something that doesn't seem to be being brought up a lot during these um, conversations, certainly the ones I've been watching. Um, and that is that I'm pretty sure everybody would agree that combating knife crime and knife violence is a really good idea. Um, you know, I don't think anybody would argue that, even the people that are getting quite aggravated and, and, and kind of frustrated in, in discussing this topic. Um, but at the same time, the, the, the legislation, or the proposed legislation, um, is essentially saying that they are going to, to stop blanket ban on the internet sales of knives. Um, in order to prevent them from being purchased by underage children, anyone under the age of 18. Um, now, that's not quite correct, and, and the reason I have, I've, I've waited a while to do this video is I wanted to find out a little bit more about it before, before coming on and talking to you guys about it. Um, so the proposal at the moment is that there will be a ban on internet knife sales, um, and that it will require a face-to-face -face dealing, a bit like the, the, the air gun laws a few years ago, um, which in and of itself doesn't bother me too much. Um, it depends how the consultation goes, and it depends on how it's managed um, and, and what options there are. So I'll, I'll give you an example. One, one of the, the, the sort of thoughts that I had, and this is not my own idea, this is various things I've seen online recently, is if you can take an institution like the post office, Royal Mail, um, or so these kind of click and collect services that, that people are using more nowadays, uh, because let's be honest, we all, we all work, most of us, um, and we're not always home to receive deliveries. So they go to a, a local, um, whether it's a, a, a sort of a news agent or that kind of thing, and they're held there, and then you go and collect them at your leisure. Um, now, if these kind of places can offer, um, and I suspect it would be a paid-for service, which I don't think anybody would really be too, too, too bothered about, provided it was a reasonable cost. And I, you know, don't ask me what I think that is. Um, but you know, if we were able to say, okay, I'm going to go on to whatever website that, that, that sells bladed articles, and this is the thing: this is not a sale, uh, a, sorry, a ban on the sale of knives. It's a ban of the sale of bladed implements. Um, so this can be knives, um, I, I assume things like chisels, swords, um, you know, work tools, all of the kitchen knives is a big one that I will come on to later. Um, but you know, all these kind of things they're saying you can't buy online because children under, under the age of 18 are going online and buying them with no verification, they're being delivered to their door and then potentially they're using them for illegal purposes. Um, so if you can find something like the post office or a click and collect service that will accept them on your behalf and then you have to physically go around to your, your local store and there's a lot of those around now so you know there, there is a network that potentially can be used and you walk in there, here's my ID, I've proven that I'm over the age of 18, thank you very much, off you go. That's one way, one potential that it could work. Um, and I think that would probably be a fairly good solution. Um, the issue being is are the likes of Royal Mail or, or indeed these click and collect services going to be willing to take on that liability because it really does require that you know every single person that works for them is able to do these age verification checks. I mean, you can make it really simple. You can make it you know similar to cigarettes. You know, you go in, you walk into a news agent. You want to buy some cigarettes. You need to provide ID. Problem with that is we all know that there are a lot of places where you can get away with that. Um, now, the focus I think here would be to put the onus on the either the seller, which is quite difficult in an online environment because, you know, a lot of people say, why can't you just be, be, be required to provide ID when you buy it online? So you maybe send an email with a, with a photocopy or a scan of your driving license, your passport, whatever. That's all well and good, but how does 
let's let's say I'm 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 a knife seller online. How do I know that the scan I'm receiving that's got a picture of an, of, of an adult with a with a correct birth date to prove they're over 18? How do I know that's the person that's emailing me? So that that's problem number one. So face to face seems to be the right way to do this, but. You know, if, if we look at it from the sort of the news agent and selling cigarettes analogy, there are a lot of places that just don't bother checking. Um, and I think for this to work, there would need to be much stronger um, checks and penalties to places that are not doing these checks. Um, now, what, what are my problems with this proposal? I mean, really, it falls down to sort of one main thing. You know, there are Two, two groups of people we're talking about here. We're talking about the, the law-abiding majority and the criminal illegal minority. Um, and, and what the proposal is saying is that they are going to... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, in, in order to try and deal with the minority, they are going to have a detrimental impact on the majority. So, for example, this is a Mora 120. It is a specifically designed wood carving knife. Now, I cannot remember ever seeing one of these in a bricks and mortar shop um, because you know they're, they're cheap as chips, but they're not actually um, particularly popular apart from the wood uh, wood carving community. Um, and the issue there is that if there's no demand for them, people are not going to stock them. Um, and if this was to come into force, and and you had to, you could, oh, you know, let's let's say Royal Mail and Click and Collect didn't work out, they wouldn't take on the responsibility or the liability. Um, so I have to go to a shop to buy this personally. I can't think of any shops that actually sell these. Um, that means you'll no longer be able to get these in the UK. Um, likewise, you know, blade collectors, you know, people who who purchase and and collect as as a hobby very specific and often quite expensive knives. Very few bricks and mortar store exist for these. Um, the same with the custom knife makers here in the UK. You know, the bushcraft and carving community, there are some really, really talented blade makers out there, knife makers, tool makers. Um, you know, you've got Nick Westerman based down in Wales. You know, there's no way if I wanted a tool, or, you know, a sharp bladed tool from Nick Westerman that I'm going to be able to drive all the way down to Wales just to collect it. You know, you're going to put, you know, a hundred or more pounds on top of the cost of this tool for me to go and collect it. Um, and, you know, it's like a lot of the, you know, you've got Sandy, Wiltshire man, you know, uh, with, with his Jack Law range. You know, I mean, I still, to this day, would love to get my hands on a Jack Law. Um, I, I you know, never seem to be around when they seem to be available. Um, but, you know, for, for me to, for, oh, sorry, for Sandy to make one of these knives, um, and then for me, you know, as much as it would be very nice to go and meet Sandy in person, and I, I hope one day to do just that, you know, but for me to, to order a knife from him for a, for a few hundred pounds, um, and then have to go and see him personally for it is, is a really big inconvenience. Um, and you know, to broaden this out slightly, you know, take a look at things like kitchen knives. Um, and you know, this this is where I think the general public are probably not gonna, because of the way the mainstream media are presenting this. You know, every every media article I've seen on this have been pictures of. Um, either illegal knives, so flick knives, trench knives, push daggers, all these kind of really scary looking things. But actually what a lot of people are not realising is that this is also going to impact things like work knives, kitchen knives, the kind of things that you have in your house every single day. Um, and if you want to buy a new kitchen knife or a new set of kitchen knives, I would suggest probably most people will do that online. And you'll go to one of the big online retailers and you'll have a choice of 50 or more different knives or sets of knives to choose from that will either match your kitchen interior or they will be a particular brand that you wish to use. You know, you may be really, really into your cooking and you have a particular set of knives that you want um, because they're particularly sharp or they've got great edge retention or, or you know they're, they're whatever the reason um, and I you know my, my argument would be that most high street shops most bricks and mortar stores do not stock that kind of selection so if this comes into play and we're, we're limited to actually physically going to an actual shop and not some kind of collection point um, the the choice available to us as a consumer, and that's not just bushcraft and carving style knives, the, these are workmen's knives, these are kitchen's knives, chef's knives, all these kind of things. 
we are going to have we're going to go from having uh, 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 options that are sort of up here somewhere to, to options that are way down here and you know we we're probably going to have and I wouldn't like to guess a number, but you know we're going to be massively restricted on choice. Um, and personally, I don't really think that's right. Um, I mean, I've, I've rambled on for a little while now, guys. There's so much I want to say about this. It's been difficult trying to sort of you know concise it down. But the other thing I wanted to say is that I watched a video um, by Matt Easton from Scholar Gladiatoria. You know, a big fan of his channel, um, and he um, again put a lot of this in much much better wording than I am. But Essentially, what he was saying, and I fully agree with this, is that at the moment you have online knife sales, you've got shop knife sales, um, and you've got kind of knives that are already in existence. Um, you know, kitchen knives, work, working knives, that kind of thing. And this is, in my view, and, and many other people's, that this is a very knee-jerk reaction by the government to be able to say to the UK at large, here is something we're going to do to prevent knife crime. That, that's great, that sounds really, really good, but when you start looking into it a little bit more, I would argue that even if this all comes into force exactly as, as um, the Home Secretary imagines it will do tomorrow, um, it will have no impact whatsoever on knife crime. And the reason being is this. So at the moment you've got internet sales over here. So let's say we scrap those internet sales, they're gone. Fine, so the, um, the law-abiding consumer can no longer buy from over here so we're forced to go over here to retail stores and um, that kind of thing so that's what we'll go and do then you've got the criminal element the people who are going to be using these items for illegal purposes to, to generally to cause people harm um, well these people are not necessarily if you're underage you're not going to be able to go to a to a bricks and mortar store though I would argue there are probably some places you still can and I still believe that there needs to be firmer regulation on the sale face to face sale um, and not just this kind of uh, uh, yeah, you sort of look old enough there you go mate um, but the, the problem is this is if you take away the online sales um, and let's say we manage to restrict the bricks and mortar retail store sales as well there are still a wealth of options for those people intent on using them to cause harm to use. Um, now Matt in his video very very rightly pointed out that unfortunately unlike the firearms or the, or the handguns ban of a number of years ago um, you know when the UK banned handguns you just couldn't get them anymore um, that didn't actually have a, have a, a, a an impact if you like on firearms crime in the UK and that, that's a whole nother video that I probably won't be doing because it's a little bit too political for my liking but um, the problem with trying to ban internet sales of knives is that that's just one source um, and even if you manage to limit the um, the retail use or the retail sale of knives there are so many places that you can go in your own home you know if you're a child in your parents home where there are sharp and pointy implements of some description. And the problem is, if you're a criminal, you don't abide by the law. So you may not be able to buy something online. But actually, what you can do is walk into any kitchen, whether that's your kitchen, your parents' kitchen, a friend's kitchen, a relative's kitchen, wherever. You can walk in there and you can come away with a four to 10 inch piece of sharp, pointy metal that you can use to hurt somebody. And there is no amount of regulation that can change that. Um, Scalagrim, um, again, another, another channel that I, I follow regularly, um, made another very good point on this, is that you, know, you can make as many regulations as you like, but let's be honest, as I've just said, you're not going to be able to take items that can be used in an offensive manner away from people, stop people having access to them because you have kitchen knives, you've got working knives, you've got screwdrivers, you've got chisels, you've got all these kind of things that are very, very readily available. Um, and the issue with that is, you know, I, I'm not saying I know all the answers, but you know, there needs to be a focus here on tackling, and I, I think the Home Secretary did make a point of this saying, you know, we need to look to educate young people. That, that's a very nice, bland, sweeping statement, but, you know, what does that mean? And, and what are they actually going to do to try and educate young people? You know, we have laws that it is illegal to carry a knife above three inches with a non locking blade. Um, uh, sorry, it's, it's illegal to carry a knife that's over three inches 
with a locking or fixed plate. Um, you know, that's already a law. Clearly, that's not working in some cases. Um, you know, is banning access to most types of knives via the internet the answer to that? I don't think so. I mean, one of the other things with this proposal that, that made me chuckle a little bit was that, um, you know, she wants to increase the powers of police officers if they find knives in people's homes. Um, and they, they, this seems to be, I haven't, you know, the, the, the wording was very, very grey on this, but it's, they seem to be suggesting that if a police officer goes into someone's house for whatever purpose and they come across um, a knife that is deemed illegal, so whether it's one of these, you know, the new term of sort of zombie knives, um, whether it's a, an already illegal knife such as a flick knife or a push dagger or a knuckle duster or something like that, um, she seems to be suggesting that the police don't already have the power to deal with this. Well, these are offensive weapons under the Offensive Weapon Act. So if a police officer was to come into my house and find a knife that is within those articles, or a knife that is already illegal under UK law, I cannot understand what they're trying to get at. Because surely, by having that illegal knife in your house, you are still committing an offence. Um, that's my understanding of the law. Perhaps I'm wrong, you know, if, if, if that's the case, please do shout and tell me. But, you know, there are, you know, they, they can't be suggesting that if a police officer comes into your house and sees a kitchen knife on your kitchen side, that they can arrest you for that, because you're perfectly legally allowed to own that knife. Um, so I'm not quite sure what they're getting at there, and I suspect this is a little bit of spin doctoring. I suspect you know, there's, there's lots of key buzzwords and phrases that are being used here to kind of strike a chord with the general public, which is great if it's actually correct, but I think this is just a bit more scaremongering, and it's trying to make out that look, look at all the wonderful things we're doing. Um, you know, the law's not strong enough at the moment, we need to increase it. But actually, as far as I understand it, if you, even to be in possession of a, 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 what is termed as an offensive weapon in the UK, um, that is a criminal offence. So if a police officer walks into your house and sees that you see you're there on the sofa playing with a flick knife, you are already committing offence by owning it. Um, anyway, that's my understanding. Um, so I've rambled on long enough, guys. I mean, again, this has been really kind of... Um, a little bit out there this video you know it's been very very disjointed and I apologize for that um, you know there's a lot I wanted to say about this subject um, it is very emotive for me as, as, as a regular user of bladed implements and, and how this potentially might impact me um, I mean to very quickly summarize you know everybody wants to try and combat knife crime um, I don't think a knee-jerk reaction in these kind of blanket bands tend to work very well um, and I don't see that this one will do. I think if we can find a middle ground, if, it, if it's definitely going to go ahead following consultation, I think provided we can find uh, a solution where the general everyday consumer is able to have something, they can pick something online um, and still have that choice and those options of buying whatever it is they like, provided it meets the, the criteria of the law, and then have it shipped somewhere local for collection where that person can then categorically prove how old they are yes here's my driver's license here's my passport I'm over the age of 18 I'm legally allowed to own what's in this box and the box doesn't have to say there's a knife in there it can just have a sticker on there saying you know um, over 18s only or something along those lines um, and in theory happy days um, so those are just my thoughts on it I'd be really really interested to hear yours um, you know, as I say, this, this subject has been getting a lot of press recently, both from the mainstream media and from sort of social media. Um, the, you know, people are getting very emotive about it. it it's a very, uh, it's a potentially very damaging proposal to, um, you know, UK hobbies, um, UK knife manufacture and industry, as well as retailers. You know, you look at the likes of people like Heine Haynes, who I would say probably 50% or more of, of their online sales will be knives. Um, and, you know, if, if they were to sort of go under because of a new legislation like this, you know, that would be a massive loss to, to the bushcraft and the camping and, and, you know, various kind of outdoor pursuits. Um, hobbies etc um, and I for one think you know we really need to look at this with with a lot more um, a lot more thought that appears to have already gone into it 
Um, the other thing I wanted to say, and I think most people talking about this online at the moment are saying the same thing, you know, you have the option right now to send a letter to your local MP and or the Home Office, both if, if possible, um, just giving them your views on this, um, you know, really, you know, what, what uh, I think people are sort of suggesting to say, um, and I would agree with this, is, is that, you know, this seems to be a real knee-jerk reaction. Um, it will not prevent underage teens and children having access to knives and it will simply drive them from from one small minority that are currently getting them online to a completely different group of knives that they can get much much easier and potentially um, and I was, I was umming and ahhing whether to say this you know things like kitchen knives potentially can do a hell of a lot more harm and a lot more damage than this kind of cheap tat that you can buy on certain online stores um, I'm not saying that's right um, and I'm not saying that you know you necessarily you know you should absolutely not be giving access to children to the cheap tat or or the um, the um, you know kitchen knives and things like that. But you know the one problem is that you will not prevent children from getting access to sharp implements. Um, you know it's all well and good saying well parents need to take responsibility, um, but you know. I, I, I personally I'm not a parent so I can't speak from experience but I do know a lot of people who are um, and from a, a, a sort of a taking a step back point of view you know I would suggest that no, no, no matter how good a parent you are um, are you watching your child and the sharp implements in your house every second of every day you know I'm not talking about young children here I'm not talking about two three four five six year olds I'm talking about children who generally are given an amount of freedom you know they can kind of maybe maybe they're allowed to walk to school by themselves maybe they're allowed to come home and prepare their own dinner or you know whatever it might be but when a child reaches a certain age um, and I, I couldn't tell you you know whether that's 10 years old 12 years old 14 years old or whatever um, you know it's not possible for people to watch children you know 24 7 24 hours a day um, which means that they can potentially, imagine this is a kitchen knife rather than a, a, you know, a wood carving knife, there is nothing to prevent a child walking in a kitchen, opening a drawer, picking up a knife, putting it in their pocket, taking it up to their bedroom or whatever, um, and at some point leaving their house with it. Um, so I don't know what the answer is to tackle knife crime in its entirety. Um, I do not believe that a ban on internet sales will have any significant impact whatsoever. Um, I think I would support strengthening the current laws and the current legislation um, and I think absolutely I think if you are purchasing a knife online we need to find a mechanism to prove that you are old enough to do so um, but I think we need to think very very carefully about how that procedure and that process is put into place um, to make sure that we are not um, you know, putting uh, whether it's rural areas, um, you know, or, or even even kind of urban areas, you know, however it's going to work, we're not putting people at a disadvantage here, and we're not restricting what people are allowed to have access to over the age of 18. Um, so anyway, guys, I've rambled on long enough. Um, you know, this is what this is a 22-minute video now, and I could carry on for probably another 22 minutes. Um, so I hope it was useful. I hope it's given you something to think about. Um, I'd be really interested to see your comments in the uh, comments box below. Love to have a conversation, what people think about this, whether it's a good idea, a bad idea, if you've got your own thoughts on how this could work, whether, whether further control is needed and if it is, how that further control is put into place, etc, etc. Um, so there we go guys, I'm going to shut up. Um, give me your comments down below um, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers guys.